Hi everyone, let's talk about Binet's formula for the Fibonacci numbers. Recall that the Fibonacci numbers are defined in this way, where f0 is equal to 0, f1 is equal to 1, and for integers n greater than or equal to 2, f of n is equal to f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. So each Fibonacci number after the first one, so after f1, is the sum of the pre previous two Fibonacci numbers. Now, it's natural to ask whether there exists a, for a formula for the Fibonacci numbers. So f of n is equal to some function n applied to the integer n. And we're going to be finding such a formula today. And as you'll see near the end, it's a very surprising formula. It, it doesn't even look like it outputs integers for the most part. We're going to be using a technique called generating functions. Generating functions are essentially power series. And you'll see what exactly those are in a moment if you haven't seen them before. The generating function for the Fibonacci numbers is capital F of X, which equals the infinite sum of the Fibonacci number K, the Kth Fibonacci number, times x to the power of k, and this runs from k equals to 0 through infinity. Now let's, let's work on this series a little bit. We know that the first term is 0, so we don't have to worry about it, and that the term with index 1 is equal to just x. So we can pull that out, and you'll see why we're doing that in just a moment. And then we have k equals to 2 through infinity of fk times x to the k. And we're just going to re-index this for a moment. So we get x plus the sum from k equals to 0 through infinity of f of k plus 2 times x to the k plus 2. The reason we did this is that k plus 2 means f of k k plus 2 is greater than or equal to 2, so we can apply the recurrence relation to that. And we get that this is equal to x plus the sum of k equals to 0 through infinity of fk plus fk plus 1 times x to the power of k plus 2. And then we can pull these this sum apart. So we get x plus the sum, we can pull, we can factor out an x squared for the first one. So we get the sum k equals to 0 through infinity of f k x to the k. And for the second one, we can pull out an x. So we get the sum k equals to 0 through infinity of f of k plus 1 x to the k plus 1. And what you should notice at this point is that this over here is just f of x and so is this over here because even though the zeroth term is missing the zeroth term is a zero is is just zero so this is also f of x so we find that f of x which was the original term on the far left is equal to x plus x squared f of x plus x times f of x. So we can isolate f of x now. We can, once we do that, we find that f of x is equal to x over 1 minus x minus x squared. So this is what the generating function for the Fibonacci numbers converges to around some interval, in some interval around 0. Next we're going to use some partial fraction decomposition. So we find that the roots are of, the, of the denominator are phi1. You can use a quadratic formula for this. Phi1 equals to negative 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. And phi2 equals to negative 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. So these are radical, radical conjugates of each other. And what we find when we use partial fraction decomposition is that f of x is equal to 1 over square root of 5 times phi 1 over phi 1 minus x 
minus phi 2 over phi 2 minus x. And we're just going to put this in a slightly different form that's equal to it so that the next step becomes clear. We can write this as 1 over 1 minus x over phi 1 minus 1 over 1 minus x over phi 2. And if you've ever seen the sum of an infinite geometric series, that's exactly what this term is and that's exactly what this term is. So we're just going to write this as two infinite geometric series, which are the sum from k equals to 0 through infinity of x over phi 1 to the k minus x over phi 2 to the k. And now we're just going to pull out the x to the k, so we get 1 over square root of 5 times the sum of k equals to 0 through infinity of 1 over phi 1 to the k minus 1 over phi 2 to the k times x to the k. So remember, this is, this is equal to the sum of the kth Fibonacci number times x to the k, k equals to 0 through infinity. So we can compare coefficients because of the uniqueness of power series in an interval around 0. So that means f, fn for any non-negative integer n is equal to 1 over phi 1 to the n minus 1 over phi 2 to the n. So we already have a formula for the Fibonacci numbers, but let's, sorry, there's also a 1 over square root of 5 here. Uh, but we can put this in a slightly easier form to, con the form that's easier to conceptualize. And that's going to use the fact that phi 1, phi 2 is equal to negative 1. So, and you can prove this using Vieta's formulas on the denominator that we had earlier, or you can just do a, a concrete computation on this. So then we find that this is equal to negative phi 2 to the n minus negative phi 1 to the n over square root of 5. And if you plug in the numbers for phi 2 and phi 1, you find that this is just equal to 1 over square root of 5 times 1 plus square root of 5 over 2, because that's negative phi 2 to the n, minus 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 to the power of n. And that is Binet's formula for the Fibonacci number. So you can see why it might seem like it shouldn't even output any integers, but many terms cancel out, and this does this does give you elements in the integers which are the Fibonacci numbers. This is f of n. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.